Today we are testing out some wireless video transmitters. These are made by Akusun. Akusun? How do you say that, Sam? Aksunun. Aksunun. <laughs> we should probably know this. This is how you properly pronounce it. Aksun. Ah, yeah. Oh. These were sent over to us from our friends over at B&H Photo, the place where I get all my camera gear online. They're fast, reliable, and I spend way too much money there. B&H also has this credit card where they actually refund you on the tax. So thank you, B&H. We're giving away one of these, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test them out, and I'm gonna keep the one that I like better, and you guys can have my leftovers. Aren't I so generous? The most generous of all. You guys don't know how much I have to pay Sam to say that. The bag of hot Cheetos. <laughs> now the reason why I'm excited about these is that at some point or another, once your crew, your video productions get bigger and bigger, you start requiring a wireless video transmitter. And the thing is right now, there's some great wireless video transmitters out there, but they are expensive. And I've been talking to the guys over at B&H because they told me that for the price, the performance of these are pretty legit. And this has HDMI and SDI. It's supposed to have, what, 1,200 feet of range. Of course, that's gonna be in a very clean environment. It sends a 1080p signal up to 60 frames per second, so that's cool. And it's supposed to have latency less than 60 milliseconds, which is actually really good. Obviously, the best latency would be zero, but again, for anything with zero latency, you're gonna be paying probably like eight or nine times the price. And on top of the typical transmitter and receiver, you also have the option to hook up to these with an app. So let's say you wanna send this over to your first AC, they're pulling your focus, but then you have a few people like clients that just kinda of wanna see what the camera is sending out. So they can go ahead and download this free app and log in and get a general reference of what you're recording. And B&H was nice enough to send us also the smaller one, which is gonna be less range and it's also SDI and HDMI, but instead of having a receiver, this is more designed to be used with an app. So let's go ahead, hook this stuff up. So here's something I've never done before, taking a Canon C70 and making it into a live stream setup. So basically these can receive a signal from a camera and with my phone's 4G or 5G signal, stronger the connection, the better. I'm gonna now be able to upload it over to YouTube and then start a stream. And look, that's a live stream. So I can actually share this link with whoever. I could either go live with it or I can send it over to Dylan, or if there was a director on the other side of the planet, they can technically check in on our live feed and tell us what to do differently with the shot. Isn't that cool? Should we just live stream this bird? Yeah, ask a question. You know I've never live streamed before, ever. Is our first and possibly only live stream ever gonna be a, a seagull? I wouldn't want it any other way. Okay. I'll pretend to be the bird. Hold on. Hello and welcome to the bird watching channel with me, the bird. Uh, I just be chilling out here and waiting for some for some fish. This is kind of crazy. I'm seeing all these comments pop up. Holy crap, a bunch of people are logging in. Okay, what do we do? This is I'm nervous. I've never done this before. Yeah, ask me anything you want to know about Gene and Dylan. And I'll answer it as best as I can. Hi everybody. I'm i I'm testing out my very first live stream ever. That's just about wraps it up for our very first live stream. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, I, I hope you had got lots of value from our 35 seconds of standing here not knowing what the hell we're doing. So thanks again and uh, how do we end this thing now? I'm too nervous to do this. Da -da 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 -da. This is the end of the vlog. Is it, is it over? <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was terrible. Anyone who actually tuned into that, I apologize. That was terrible. We had no preparation. The live stream stuff is crazy. It's like instant feedback. It's like, ah. Yeah, I can't do that. I I uh, can't handle the, the pressure very well, as you can see. Felt like one of the scariest things ever. I like being able to edit, and in case I say something stupid, I like being able to cut it out. So. Uh, yeah, but we did it. We've live streamed before. That was the very first time. What I do think is cool is that you can stream it as unlisted and you can send a link over to your clients or anyone that's like on the other side of the world that just wants to see what you're shooting. Can you direct the whole movie from Japan? Yeah. <laughs> what I didn't realize is that YouTube actually uploads the whole stream, which included 15 minutes of me going like, is this thing on? Like, like plugging it in like oh, uh, how's it can you hear it? is the sound yeah. check mic mic check and all that got uploaded oh my god this is so embarrassing I, I, dude did your adrenaline shoot up yes. when we went live dude I, I'm, that's why i'm nervously laughing right? i don't know how you guys do that like all this i know i can cut it out so it's easy but as soon as we went live like i was like 
I can't cut any of this out. Like, and then like I, I locked up and I got scared. And then, and then the 50 minutes of just, hmm, is the audio sound checked? Oh gosh, all that, I can't handle this. Let's get our shit together and uh, come Try back once we do a little bit more prep. So we got it hooked up. So I'm seeing myself through this monitor, which is always a little bit weird. But I like it when they allow you to just slap a battery straight onto here. Because usually I'm trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to make sure I get PTAP powered over to the transmitter? Another thing that's really cool is we're feeding this signal over to the transmitter via HDMI. But we can cross it over to an SDI on the receiving end. So you can go ahead and use HDMI out of this end or SDI. So it's also kind of like a conversion if that's something you need. What is nice is that it's just very simple. There's a little dial right here. So you can go ahead and dial it. Let's say we want to go over to channel group 10 Then I can turn it and it actually does stay on this channel until I confirm, yes, I want to change the channel, which is also smart because you don't want to be trying to pull focus and then all of a sudden you accidentally bump this, right? So. This is pretty well thought out. It's simple, but it works really well. Next thing I wanna test is the 1200 foot range, which is pretty significant. I mean, usually it's 300 for close proximity, 500 is pretty good. 1000 is pretty solid. So if this can even get anywhere close to 1000, like you're way good. So Sam's got his transmitter on there and we're gonna see how far out he can go. You ready for the Sam? Oh yeah. All right, there he is. And uh, so far signal still good, but uh, we'll give it a little bit more time and see how far out he can can get. You see him, he's like all the way over there somewhere. So, so far so good. I do see the signal getting a little bit blockier, but, oh, okay, so there, it disconnected. So at this range, whenever Sam puts his body right in between the transmitter and us, then it tends to kill the signal, which is pretty common in all transmitters in my experience. All right, so go ahead and keep the transmitter facing us because whenever you put your body between us, it cuts out, but yeah, just keep it right there and keep going. All right, now that Sam's all the way over there, you can speak freely. How do you really feel about Sam? You know, I didn't really think much about this, but uh, people are saying at a Hank Hill butt, and then after I heard that, it's like, exactly. Just like <laughs> I can't stop thinking, it's like, exactly, it's just a straight cartoon. You're really hurting his feelings here. Well, he started this. He's that little dot right there. I don't know if you guys could see him, but you think that's like a thousand feet? Yeah, seems about so. How do we test out a thousand feet? If I share my location with you, do you think it's gonna tell you how far I am? Sam, sometimes, you have a good idea. Usually not, but sometimes you have a good idea. Looking at this map, it tells you exactly how much 500 feet is, and it does look right around 1,200 feet. I like how easy it is to figure out. Yeah, it's very straightforward. I mean, there's a dial with numbers on it, so you just have to match the dial. I love that it can convert the HDMI to SDI and the SDI signal to HDMI, because let's say you have a camera like a Alexa Mini. That doesn't have HDMI, but let's say you have only HDMI monitors, you can connect the two, and same vice versa. You know, like the Black Magic pocket cinema camera or the C70 that only has HDMI out but if you have one of those professional monitors that only have SDI in you can still connect the two through one of these so I love the cross compatibility that this creates all right so let's go ahead and check out this app it's actually pretty straightforward which I like I like the simple stuff as long as it works we even have audio levels check that out pretty cool right uh, we also have a look which is very cool you can select uh, several different looks looks right here. We have waveform on this app, like not even the A7S III has waveform on it. We could also zoom in for focus, which is cool. And there's a ton of different tools, anamorphic distortion that you could apply right there. Zebra, false color. Focus is probably gonna be a pretty cool one. It seems a little bit sensitive right now, so you could go ahead and dial back that sensitivity of that focus peaking. Of course, if I'm pulling focus, I want the highest resolution I could get. So monitor would be preferred, but if you're in a jam, this might come into play. It is time for Dylan's lesson of the day. Hello. What's up? This is a wireless video transmitter. Why would we want something wireless like this? Cause that'll be far away from a camera or stuff. Yeah, exactly. Now who wants to have a wireless monitor? People who have cameras. No, actually, well, well yeah. yeah, sorta. First person that's gonna want one is a first AC. First AC stands for first assistant camera. And they're gonna be pulling your focus. And the problem with just mounting a monitor on top of the camera is once your crew gets big, everyone's like trying to huddle around looking at your monitor. Moving around in an action scene or whatever, then the first AC can kind of chill out at a distance and pull focus from over here. Also, when you start getting clients that are paying you the big bucks, once you go up to them and hand them one of these, they always get super excited. They're like, oh, sweet. 
And also it can help. Like for example, wardrobe, they might be like, oh, that person has a logo on their shirt. I recently did a shoot where I set up an iPad for the drivers so they can get an idea of what position they need to be in to get the shot. So it helps to have a lot of these sitting around. The problem is that they're expensive usually but this yeah. one is a lot cheaper this one's 649 bucks Jeez. but one that actually well yeah i need that does that sound expensive yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because like i get why you think it's expensive but one that has about a thousand feet of range like the industry standard stuff you're paying about five grand what? at least for something like this yeah that's not right. <laughs> you just need to realize how expensive $650 still is, but relative to what relative, else is up there, yeah. it's actually much better. Let's say you're shopping for a wireless video transmitter. What are some of the things that you want to look out for? Uh, range. Range, yes. So this is 1,200 feet line of sight, which we already tested earlier. But really why you want 1,200 feet isn't for that distant for the most part. You want it to punch through walls and every obstacle that's in the way, you're gonna significantly compress that range. What's also important is how robust is the signal, especially if you're a first AC, because if you can't see the screen, then you can't pull focus. And if it's a dolly shot or something, you're screwed. Like if you're a client or set design, even if the screen cuts out for a second or two, it's not that big of a deal. But first ACs is really important. So this is a dual band 2.4 and five gigahertz, which just gives it more strength and more reliable connection, especially if you're a few rooms over. What else would you want in a wireless video transmitter? I uh, don't want it to lag. Exactly, latency, that's important. Now this claims uh, under uh, 60 milliseconds of latency on average. So that's on average. Sometimes it's gonna be less, sometimes it's gonna be more, but on average, it's gonna be less than 60 milliseconds, which is pretty good. Here's the thing, even when you have something that's zero latency, you will be dealing with a little bit of latency. Even the LCD on the back of this screen has about 60 to 65 milliseconds of latency just on the camera. That's so little that you can't really tell. And then I hooked up the camera directly to the monitor with an HDMI cable and I had about 135 milliseconds of latency. Now that extra latency might either come from the camera outputting or the monitor itself. That's more than the good amount of latency, right? Well, 135 milliseconds is this long. It is there, you can kind of notice it, but that's what people usually just deal with. Like literally without using a wireless transmitter, you plug the camera into the monitor, you deal with that much latency. So 135 is kind of our baseline, our control. And then I fed it through the wireless transmitter. And then I was dealing with about 180 milliseconds. So it did add roughly around 50 milliseconds of latency. So now the total is about 180 milliseconds, which is about this long. So I don't consider the Wi-Fi to be as reliable as the dedicated receiver, but when the connection's good, it's pretty solid. Can, can I stop now? Uh, just a few more, please. <laughs> Again, latency, it's there. And if you really need there to be zero latency, you can, but you're just gonna have to front a ton more cash for it. I wanna say a majority of people aren't willing to spend five grand to get a thousand feet of range. Yeah, right? uh, unless you're trying to take this really seriously, if you're like a professional IC, then you will put that down because you're investing in your career. But when you want your client or whoever to have like a reference, yeah. this is a great option. I keep talking about how much clients love it when you hand them a wireless monitor. Yeah. You know, they all glow like, you guys are so professional. We fooled them. Yeah, we did. <laughs> You can send it to four devices and you could either send it to four receivers like that or four iPads or oh, two or two. Four, seven, oh, I see, I see. Cool. Oh, ha -ha, there it is. Is it weird looking at yourself on a giant TV? It's weird looking at myself in any situation. Whoa, infinity. I'm just gonna use this TV for monitoring everything now. Wherever we go, this TV comes. Hey, it's like a video game, the over-the-shoulder angle. Oh yeah. <laughs> now there are also some features that you get out of some of the top of the line transmitters that you don't get in here. They're not really features that I personally care about, but maybe you might. One is the ability to apply a LUT in the transmitter. So I personally don't care about it because I usually apply it on the monitor's end. That way I have flexibility to turn it on and off on the monitor. Or if that doesn't have it, then I might apply it in the camera. So the camera outputs a picture with a LUT already applied. 
But if you're running a combination where you can't do either or, then it would be kind of useful to be able to apply the LUT right here on the transmitter. The other thing to consider is encryption. So the top of the line models, they can't really be accessed by outside of the production. So big studios like Warner Brothers, they're gonna have a lot of sensitive data that they're shooting. But with these, if I'm filming something, I'm broadcasting a video signal. And I guess if someone pulls up and happens to have one of these receivers and tunes into the right channel group, then they can intercept at the signal, but I'm not too worried about it. I mean, that'd just be a big waste of paparazzi's time, so. But with all that being said, I think these are my favorite budget video transmitters right now. I think they provide a lot of power and versatility, especially for the price. I also have to admit that when I first got these, I wasn't too excited about the app feature, but after using it a couple times and just seeing how convenient and how decently solid it is, that's one of my favorite features about this, which is why I'm actually gonna be doing the giveaway with this 2S Pro, and I will be holding on to this little 2S. Now, this is basically like this, but the app-only version of it. Keep in mind that this is better and more professional, but I think personally, I would be using this more often. I like how the antennas just fold up. It's gonna be more compact. I can still connect up to four devices on this. I can still use the same type of battery. And a lot of times having the app or an iPad is going to be enough for what I'm trying to do. And it's just that much more convenient. I personally wouldn't really count on this for pulling focus, but now I'm using autofocus quite a bit. So I just wanna be able to share my image with people around me. And also when I'm on a bigger project where there's gonna be a first AC, a lot of times first ACs like to bring their own video transmitters. That's zero latency. And they like to work with the tools that they're already familiar with. So I'll let them handle the professional video transmitters. But for me, I just kind of want something that's convenient. and. This thing's awesome. So details down there in the comments on how you guys can win this. And let's go ahead and cut to the close. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a Potato Jet production. Make sure to hit that like button, comment down below. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you can see more of the goofiness from my boy Potato Jet, my boy Sam, aka Mango Copter, and the one and only Dylan!